It's an interesting area, the requirement for implantable defibrillators, and I addressed that in my talk yesterday. I think the big issue has been the difficulties in prescribing primary prevention implantable cardioverter defibrillators. There's quite a bit of pushback, particularly from our colleagues in the heart failure field, who feel there's a lack of evidence to support the use of these devices in the broad range of patients to whom they're currently applied. I think they have some support for their statement. I think we need to be better at targeting defibrillators to people who truly benefit from them, because defibrillators carry downsides. And if people re receive a defibrillator, um, that will not go on to, to use it, as it were, um, to protect them from fibrillation, then it's a waste in terms of cost. It's also a waste in terms of that patient's or person's, you know, disability, if you like, through the presence of this device that they hitherto do not need. I've been working over a period of years on a non-contact mapping system for atrial fibrillation. It requires a, a realignment, if you like, of thinking about the physical basis of the heartbeat. And we, the system requires to make detailed measurements from within the heart that involve both ultrasound and electrical measurements. The physics is somewhat difficult to understand, and it also challenges ideas that have been around for many years. And so therefore, sometimes there's a bit of a challenge getting the message across. The debate was against a, a fellow called Kim Rajapan, who's a good friend of mine from Oxford, who's also the, the organizer of the meeting in Birmingham. And he was very gracious, but in fact, the audience agreed with him that non-contact was not the future of electrophysiology at this point in time. I believe the audience were wrong, but that's something that we will continue to fight.